Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and today we are back with the No RAM Mono. In the last video, we took a fairly deep dive into looking at some of the sound design potential on this uh, rather interesting mono synth, and how every single knob on the uh, on the front panel here essentially has its own LFO and envelope, and what that allows you to do from a sound design perspective. In this video, I want to um, expand upon some of the sound design ideas, but also dive into a little bit more on the sequencer side of things, because again, in the same way that uh, the controls sort of make it look like there's not like a whole lot going on in here, similarly the sequencer looks like it's pretty basic, but actually has some really, really uh, very, very cool uh, tricks up its sleeve. So what we're going to do on the way to exploring the sequencer and some more sound design ideas on the mono in a bit more depth uh, today is, as you probably guessed from the thumbnail and title of the video, we're going to turn uh, this synth into a drum machine. Now, it's pretty much my favorite thing to do with a synth, um, turn it into a drum machine. And uh, I've certainly done it a number of times on the channel because I think it's fun. I think it's a little bit funny to do, to be honest, in some cases, um, but, but also, um, Trying to get a synth to do things that on the surface it's not really designed to do necessarily is a really, really fantastic way to get a really in-depth understanding of uh, all of the features that the synth has. So um, I'm hoping that uh, along the way, uh, turning this into a little drum machine, uh, we can learn some uh, useful, interesting tricks as well. One thing that's definitely worth noting before we get going, actually, is that this synth has a feature called Mod Notes. And what that allows you to do is assign a different patch to each note on the keyboard and then sequence those notes in the sequencer and you basically get a different patch on each step. So something a bit like sound locks on an electron box, something like that. And that would be, uh, for sure, definitely one approach that you could take for creating a drum machine. You create a bass drum patch, you create a snare drum patch, you create a hi-hat patch, and so on, and then you just sequence them across uh, this sequencer. Um, that's an absolutely legitimate way of doing it, and arguably a very sensible way of doing it as well. That's not how I'm going to do it in this video, um, because it means that I can't show off a bunch of features about the sequencer. So uh, we're not going to be using mod notes in this example, instead we're going to be doing everything on a single patch and then using the sequencer to manipulate the patch in real time to get our various different sounds, um, which is a different approach uh, and people might have their opinions on whether or not it's the better approach, but um, that's the approach that I want to take in this video because um, I, I personally prefer it and I think it's more interesting and more performative in real time uh, as well. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, Mod notes is an option, it's just not one that I'm taking today. Oh, just in the interest of transparency, Naran sent the mono over to me to make some videos on, uh, but I've not otherwise been paid and they've got no say in any of the uh, video content that I make, nor have they asked for that. And as always, I just won't feature stuff on the channel that I don't think is interesting and cool. And as I mentioned in the previous video, I, I really do think this is a very interesting synth indeed. So uh, let's make a drum machine out of it, shall we? So in terms of the goals I'm setting for myself here, um, I want a kick drum, I want a snare, hats, and then other electronic percussion types of some metallic-y stuff, some woody stuff, maybe some tom type stuff if we're feeling a bit fruity. Um, uh, also, just um, for your interest, um, in the interest of, I was going to say for the interest of brevity, but we all know that's unlikely on this channel, um, I'm going to stick to um, just 16 steps on the sequencer. Uh, each pattern can go up to 64 steps, though, on uh, on the mono. And uh, you can also do odd number meters as well. So you, uh, if you want to do things outside of sort of 4-4, four, four, uh, that's perfectly possible. But just, as I say, for the interests of sort of keeping it more simple um, to uh, demonstrate the, the concepts here, we're just going to stick to 16 steps. So let's get started. So uh, let's start by making ourselves a kick drum sound, because that's always a good place to start, I think. So um, we'll just use one oscillator for this. So we'll just turn down oscillator two, and we'll just have oscillator one halfway, because remember we can drive into the filter, so unity is about half here. So I'm just on the initialized patch here, uh, and I'll go over to a sine wave on uh, oscillator one there, Let's open up the filter just for a second. So there are actually some harmonics in this sine wave, it's not pure sine. 
because it's difficult to do pure signs on analog. Um, so let's um, let's assume that we just want to get this nice and low. So we'll tune this down low, but we'll sort of tune it to C, I think. Uh, that's a good place to start. And let's give it that classic pitch envelope um, that you have on a sort of electronic kick. So we'll make sure we've got the frequency selected here. And we'll come over here to the X env and we'll just crank the uh, amount of switch so we can hear it. Attack down, decay, moderate. Yeah, that's sort of getting there. Uh, we'll give it a longer decay. And the reason we're going to give it a longer decay at the moment is because we might want to have incidental things happening within the notes, because we can do that on the mono, but we can tweak that as we go along. Um, let's also um, give this a bit of a push into the filter. Hello. Oh, that's meaty, isn't it? Yeah, and as we, we tweak the cutoff, we'll probably find some places where it distorts in a really nice way. That is, that's pretty big, isn't it? <laughs> um, and of course, we can get different flavors of it with our wave shape here. Great. Okay, so let's just pop a couple of um, steps down, like maybe. Something like that as a place to start. So that's a good kick drum sound, I think, to get us started. Um, no complaints about that. Being able to drive the filter just makes things real meaty. It's almost too big. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that's our um, kick drum. So let's get our snares happening next. Now, one thing you might have noticed looking at uh, the front panel of the mono is that there doesn't appear to be noise. And you kind of want noise for a snare drum and for hats indeed, as we get there. Um, and yes, as in terms of um, sound sources, there aren't. But um, we do have on the um, X mod, a sample and hold random source as a uh, modulation. And we can also send it into audio rate, which will essentially give us noise one way or another. And if we apply that to another um, uh, another a parameter, uh, a suitable parameter on here, we can get noise going on. So I thought what I would do, um, and I'll just bring everything up just for a second, but we'll start tweaking things. It's a pretty cool bass sound already. Um, is um, actually apply noise to the frequency of oscillator 2 to get, um, get some noise uh, happening here. So if I just select frequency on oscillator 2 as our context for our X mod, if we turn up um, the amount here, Okay, so there's our pitch modulation going on there. And if we press the wave, there we go. So now we have um, a random source on here as the wave shape. Now obviously at the moment this doesn't sound like noise, but if we tap type twice, that'll get us into audio rate. And we can get noise this way. Uh, if we tune this differently, we might be able to get something a little bit higher pitched. Something like that. Now, how are we going to get this into our uh, sequencer in uh, a way that works? Now, um, probably the Probably the easiest way of doing it is to um, uh, actually automate the oscillator 2 knob. But I kind of, I do want to do that, but I want to put another layer on top of that. But let's let's do that first. So um, so let's pop down, 
places where we want some some snares, so maybe on there. So on five and uh, twelve can be where our um, snares are happening. Now, obviously, at the moment, we're hearing uh, a bunch of kick drums with all of our snares, which we don't necessarily want. And we're also hearing a lot of snare with all of our kicks, which, again, we, we probably don't necessarily want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn oscillator two back down and um, introduce one of the features of the sequencer here, which is that we have um, essentially parameter locks. If people have um, played with Electron gear, and I know a lot of viewers on my channel probably have, um, this will be very familiar to you. So on Electron gear, you can hold down a step in the sequencer and we can lock a parameter to a particular position. On the mono, it's slightly different actually, because you're not locking the actual parameter position. What you're doing is you're locking an offset from its current position, which means uh, rather usefully you can tweak um, the parameter that's locked and it will just sort of move itself into its new position, uh, which allows you to be a little bit more performative than you can maybe be on the electrons where um, sort of if you're tweaking a filter and you have the filter locked on a step, it's going to jump back to exactly that place every time. There are advantages to both approaches. Um, I like the, the fact that it's that the mono's gone with this approach. So we've turned um, oscillator two down. And so we want to get our snares on five. So we can hold down step five and we can turn up our oscillator. Yep. Um, and uh, we want it on 12 as well. We can do the same. What's quite neat while you're tweaking stuff is that it, you can kind of hear where it is. Okay, so now we've got some stuff going on there. We probably don't want to have the kicks happening or not as loud on these ones. So we could also turn down the kick on these. So at the moment this is quite a digital sounding thing. It's um, not necessarily hitting the way that I want it hit at the moment. So one other thing that I might do is rather than have um, this um, uh, X mod affecting the frequency at all times, let's actually set it up so that the uh, X mod amount is affected by the X end so we can get more sort of snappy sound on the snare. That also will allow us to repurpose oscillator two to do other things as well. So uh, to do that, um, so at the moment, uh, the amount is just a fixed amount. If I hold down funk and tap these two buttons, uh, you should notice, he says, as it doesn't, make sure I've selected the right thing. Oh, it's because I'm pressing pattern, silly. Uh, yeah, sorry, hold down funk. Uh, tap those two buttons and you can see here that the amount knob is now flashing. Uh, what that means is if I can turn this down and if I play, we can hear our unaffected um, oscillator two now. And now if I turn up the effect here, dynamics into it. Okay, so that's getting somewhere now. Um, now, I might not want this to actually be happening on every step either. So if I turned up oscillator keys to be getting that sound happening on the kicks as well. So we can go one step further here and we can unlink the um, uh, X end from notes which I showed in the previous video so if I hold down these two uh, steps and tap on just those two you won't hear any difference but now if I turn up also to set up now probably on the wrong parameter aren't I? Oops. try again We 
might want to also now set these steps to be a shorter um, note length, which we can do. And now we're sounding a bit more like we're getting some more sort of drum machine stuff going on. So, kick and snare, let's uh, get some hi-hats in. So hi-hats are pretty easy from this perspective because we've kind of got uh, our noise source already and it's just gonna be like a higher pitched and probably shorter um, noise sound. So um, let's maybe um, pick a higher note and um, maybe put, put one on three, seven and 15. That'd be where our hi-hats are going to be. So where those high notes are, right? So on these uh, steps, we're going to want to get rid of our kick drum altogether so we can and we're going to want to turn up our uh, noise source. And we're going to want to make sure that we're triggering our noise uh, on the filter, uh, on the frequency of this oscillator. So we can select this one, come in here, and put down trigger steps for the envelope here. Yeah, uh, we want to make it shorter, so we can. Tweak the decay in each of these. And we probably want to make uh, these a little bit sort of um, more high passed, perhaps, uh, or band passed. Uh, so we can actually um, lock or uh, uh, yeah, lock the color control on the filter, which uh, is going to give us, um, rather than low pass, we can have band pass or high pass. Let's try band pass. Maybe like a high pass. Cool, um, and uh, perhaps we want this last one to be a little bit more snappy. That one a bit longer. Get it a bit of variation in there. Cool, and let's, um, now we've got this one snappy, let's also introduce another feature of the sequencer, which is that we can uh, ratchet notes as well. So uh, to ratchet a note, uh, you uh, hold down the step. Oh, it's a long stretch for step 15. Uh, so hold down the step and funk, and then we've got this ratchet control on the decay uh, knob down here. And depending on where we set that, we get more ratchets. Um, hi hat's a bit loud at the moment, I think. So let's just uh, turn them down a bit. Cool. Let's just have. A And because we've locked the um, hats to be more high passed, we can kind of take the rest of the kit out because that's all low pass, but still have the hi hats in there, which is cool. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, and you can see here, as an example, I've just turned the decay up all the way, uh, or a lot higher. And you can hear that our hats have got longer as well, but they're still shorter than the other stuff. So that's kind of what we're talking about with this sort of offset approach here. Pseudo reverse stuff as well with the attack. Really tight, snappy stuff. Okay, um, let's get some sort of woody, sort of metal, sort of percussion y type stuff in here as well, because this is starting to sound like a real thing, I think. Okay, so let's get some sort of woody, plucky, metallic y type stuff. And that's all going to be down to sort of uh, frequency modulation and audio rate modulation, I think. So let's. Um, uh, maybe let's use the uh, volume of oscillator 2 and do some audio rate modulation of that as a way of getting some um, metallic-y kind, kind of stuff in it. So uh, let's just put down, on step 6, let's put down a friend there. Do you know what I quit? Quite just like that zap. <laughs> okay, we'll get to the woody stuff in a second. Uh, happy little accidents and all that. I like that little zap there. Uh, but maybe we don't want it every single time. Uh, so yeah, it's a good opportunity to, uh, to show off another feature of the sequence here. So in the same way that we have uh, Ratchet, we also have uh, the, the ability to do probability. The ability to do probability. Uh, so if I hold down function and six, and then the attack knob over here, if I just turn this up, this turning it up increases the probability that it will be skipped or lowers the probability that it's going to play, depending on which way we want to look at. So if we want it like 50% of the time, Stick in the middle and hopefully yeah, skip to that time. Skip to that time. Law of averages means we're going to get it this time. No, no. <laughs> it just doesn't want to come back now. It will do. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, and then we, we get, it, get it a couple of times. So we can put in these sort of interesting uh, randomized uh, bits in there. Okay, so let's get back to sticking like a woody metallic y type plucky friend oh, in here somewhere. So um, let's maybe just stick down something on step 11 here. Okay, um, so um, what should we do on, on this here? Well, let's maybe take our kick out on that step and put our slice two up. And um, yeah, how are we going to get some audio rate stuff going on here? Uh, perhaps we can audio rate modulate the uh, cutoff. That might be a good way of doing it. Um, so let's select our cutoff as our knob of interest. And if we double tap type to come into audio rate and turn up the event. We can get some interesting stuff going on there. Cool, yeah, that's doing the trick. But again, we don't want this to be happening all the time that we're playing. So we'll do what we did with our noise, which is first um, we will um, have our X and be responsible for doing that modulation. So funk and double tap there. We'll make that flash. Turn that up. Turn the attack down. Okay, somewhere. Something like that. So you can kind of hear that there's like a fade in. You might be wondering what's going on there. And so did I uh, for quite some time. Uh, and what that is, is that because the audio rate X mod is linked to the frequency of uh, oscillator one and we are modulating the pitch of oscillator one, we are getting uh, a, a frequency change at the start, which is kind of giving this effect of a um, fade in. It's not really a fade in. It's just that the um, frequency has been made modulated two different ways. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is have this happen on every single uh, step. So we can unlink the XN and just have it on the stuff that we're interested in. So that one, for example. OK. 
Okay. Um, and uh, perhaps we want this to be snappier. Cool. Just a little throaty little glup sound, which I like. Probably get that more throaty by also maybe locking the resonance up on that one. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. Little wet little. That's so cool. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, let's hold down funk and uh, maybe not have that every single time. So just adjust the probability. That's such a cool little sound. Love it. Okay. Um, right, we've got some more steps. So let's put some stuff on other steps. Um, so one thing I think that is a real simple thing that we could do is just maybe put like a higher note on one of these steps over here. Like, can we put that like really, really short there? And maybe again, not have that happen every time. And how about we try, um, try to get like a reverse symbol thing going on. Um, so maybe on step 10, turn down our kick, turn up our, Oscillator 2. Uh, we also want the filter modulation for our noise happening there, don't we? So let's make sure we drop one of those on there. Cool. Uh, turn up the F tag. Accept. That's not going to re-trigger each time. We've already got this kick drum happening. So it's probably not the right step to do that on. Let's try on step eight instead. And also remove that. And turn that down. So again, turn that down, turn it up. Yeah. There we go. So by parameter locking the, the attack there, get a sort of swoop up thing happening going. We don't want that every time, so again, probably much less than 50%. And then we can jam a little bit. What else can we do? Uh, what else can we do? Let's get some more general movement going on here, perhaps. So obviously we can jam with stuff in real time, but it might be nice to have some things just moving around generally. So um, like having this wave control change over time might be um, an interesting way just to get some slow variations into things. So let's select the wave control here. And on the X mod, just with it down slow, make sure it's in the middle and turn it up full. A 
faster. We should get some interesting variations going on there. Like that. Um, we can also maybe do the same with this one, but just not as far. And perhaps we want that tempo synced instead. So we've got this knob selected. Tap type one for tempo sync. Just a tiny bit of variation. Just turn it down. does some interesting stuff just sort of tonally so maybe have that moving just a tiny bit as well just again slowly to keep things interesting like on the filter here that we have the sort of in-between points where we can get a bit of band pass and a bit of low pass or a bit of band pass and a bit of uh, sorry a bit of low pass and a bit of high pass which is kind of like a notch filter we can use that to get a bit more clarity without compromising the bottom end A little bit of re um, well not reverb, we've got some delay over here, which is the flashback too. Let's see how that sounds. love using synths in the wrong way because I don't think you can you don't get these types of drum machine sounds by using a drum machine perhaps we'll throw just a couple more um, steps in here just because we can One thing that I haven't shown on here, I don't know whether it will come out nicely, is that we also have micro shift on steps. So we've got that 
from there we can actually set it off by make it come early or come late. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's other stuff we could do in here. We could tr track accents in here. Um, and we can choose what the accents do. It might be an interesting way to get other variations in here as well. I really love these tight sounds that you can get with it. Anyway, um, as you can probably tell, I could play with this all day. Uh, and probably will once I stop recording. Uh, but... Um, I think we'll probably leave it there for today. Um, hopefully this has demonstrated some of the fun stuff we could be doing with the mono that is uh, certainly not common 303 <laughs> mono synth type stuff. Um, yeah. Um, so I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, then as always, a, a like and a subscribe is massively appreciated. Um, uh, and uh, let me know in the comments uh, what else you'd like to see from the mono because I'm happy to show off cool synths as much as I possibly can and this is, as I say, a very cool synth um, but until next time thank you so much for joining me And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.